Hi Matthias. Hi Dom. So our mission here at Signum is to empower everyone everywhere to own digital assets with complete trust. So maybe we can start by talking a little bit about that. Sure. But what it really boils down to is the core invention that the blockchain brought to us, namely that it provides the ability for us to transfer originals and not copies from me to you mm -hmm. at any point in time, wherever we are, as long as, if, as we have access to the internet. What it means in turn is that this is the foundation for people to have more direct access to what they own, an ability to transfer what they own more freely and also providing then as a result more choice for, for clients. And we see Signum's mission as uh, an enabler, as a trust layer to facilitate this and to basically build a bridge from traditional financial market infrastructure and how products are delivered today to future finance as we call it. And future finance encompasses both innovations in the cryptocurrency space uh, around the bitcoins and the ethereums of the world, around custody, brokerage, but also staking yield products to tokenization, which allows us to fractionalize ownership, again, contributing to that mission of providing more direct access to unique emotional investment opportunities. Sure. And zooming in on tokenization, how, how does this help realize our mission then? Well, just adding on to what I've mentioned before, it, it basically, A, it fractionalizes ownerships. So we've recently tokenized a Picasso masterpiece. That means what before only very few could own in full is now available, available to many mm -hmm. in a fractionalized manner. But the ownership is still direct. So every token represents direct ownership in the painting. So there's no layering in between, no structuring, no special purpose vehicle or company. It is really directly linked to the ownership of the, of the painting. So in that sense, it's very much in line with our mission mm -hmm. to provide more direct access and easier transferability yeah. of the ownership. So one of our strategic themes this year is opening up. So tell me more about that as well. Sure, opening up for us means to provide infrastructure or access to the many innovations that we have in the digital asset space broadly. And again, encompassing in the cryptocurrency space, but also in the tokenization area. And uh, on the tokenization area, we've decided to doubling down on four verticals, all with the common goal to provide unique investment opportunities, emotionally driven also investment mm -hmm. opportunities by allowing this fractionalization of ownership and easier transfer of ownership of company shares, for example, but also real assets. The four areas are first venture capital. So we want to help companies in the growth stage to raise capital in a much more efficient way, both from an investor and an issuer standpoint. Secondly, real estate, the ability to fractionalize and tokenize a real estate object or, and then to, to have it invested in by many, by many and not just few. And again, without any layers in between. It is the arts and collectibles vertical as a third one where we've tokenized paintings, but also wine, where again, the token represents direct ownership in the real asset and not via a layer. And fourth, it's mid cap, the mid cap vertical, which is, represents the tokenization of a company's shares. You spoke uh, right at the start there about unique investments. What makes these unique then from an investment point of view? Unique in the sense that it's, uh, it could be in the one, on the one hand that it's investment opportunities that would not be accessible to a certain group of, of people. I mean, again, buying or co-owning a Picasso is probably not been something that was just easily available before tokenization made it possible. But it would also be then what happens once you own it, namely the easier transferability of an, of an asset, a secondary market which is available at any point in time, and again, which is available um, also within seconds transferring from me to you without much in between. Yeah. So that is what it makes it unique. And maybe thirdly, the uniqueness also comes from the usability of it. So you may, uh, of course, know that you're interacting with the blockchain, but you will not feel it because from a user standpoint, you're basically just within a few clicks, you have access to it. And when you transfer an asset, it takes you again two clicks and a few seconds later, you hold the assets or you have paid for it. Mm -hmm. So it's also unique in terms of the experience of investing and transferring the asset. 
So zooming out, how do we look at the opportunities presented by tokenization versus, say, for example, cryptocurrencies? Well, first and foremost, and I think that's very important to understand, the baseline is the same. It's the same concept. It's the, the blockchain technology's core invention, again, of transferring originals and not copies. So the, both, the same concept applies to both. Cryptocurrencies opportunity is here right now. It's uh, more than tri $2 trillion are in circulation. The, the market cap has grown massively over the last 12 to 24 months. There's lots of innovation going on in terms of decentralized finance infrastructure, but also non-fungible tokens, etc. So this is the immediate revenue opportunity. This is where people see it today. Uh, tokenization is also here today, but I would call it an emerging opportunity because you know, us and others are still finalizing the infrastructure, still showcasing via Lighthouse project what it really can do. There will be that inflection point which is likely to be here in the next one or two years. There's already a number of tokenization providers. So um, it'd be good to talk about what makes what we're doing special in the market. Yeah, first of all, I would like to mention that I'm very thankful that there's many because it requires many. This is a completely new infrastructure that we're building, which cannot be done by one, cannot, doesn't require or cannot be pushed forward by siloed thinking. Mm -hmm. um, the very core of the blockchain technology's philosophy is open source, decentralized network, the rule of the many, community, and hence that is good. Now, what makes Swiss, uh, Signum's uh, proposition specialist that will cover the entire value chain of it and that is on the tokenization stack both the primary side that means both from an issuer and an investor's standpoint you can basically cover the entire value chain from on one platform so there's no no gaps in the user flows it just seamlessly works and is also integrated with today's fiat world Secondly, on the secondary market as well, we have a fully regulated open trading facility which allows the safe and regulated transfer of assets then once they are issued. So looking beyond efficiency gains that this technology can deliver, um, you spoke before about user experience. Are there ways that this technology can be applied to create new types of experiences in this, uh, in this process? Well, ultimately, I think it's a new way of how companies can interact with the various stakeholders. Uh, it's a new way of, of a bonding, of community, of engaging a community between a company, a brand and its users by, for example, creating micro shares of the company so that you make your customers also your owners or co-owners, which obviously drives a very different behavior and loyalty than if you just get some loyalty points with which you then can buy I don't know what. So that is that is one. It kind of it, it creates more intimacy and more and an ability to to create new business models mm -hmm. almost. Um, and um, and I think that is something that we are all just learning. And uh, and and there's many more things to come on the basis of this technology, which even I can't yet imagine. Yeah. So this exciting project with uh, the Picasso is done uh, with a company called Art Mundi. Um, you talk about why we're partnering with Atmundi on this project. Why? It's very clear because we're both, uh, I would dare to say, pioneers in our respective fields of expertise. Artmundi has since many years been pioneering, providing access into investment opportunities of, of art. Um, secondly, it's the people and the openness for, mm. for, to try out new things. I mean, the fact that they were very excited to do this with us shows that they are um, they're innovators, they're pioneers, they're not a wait and see, it's not a wait and see company. Yeah. And ultimately, the foundation of which is the people, is the teams that have been collaborating very well. And uh, so the tokenization of the Picasso painting, Filet Obere, is really just the start of a, of a, of a long term relationship yeah. that the two companies envisaging. So, uh, one of the questions I'm going to be asking all our guests today as we celebrate this amazing project and the issuance of, of the Picasso is. If Pablo was alive today and he was here at our event, what do you think he would make of the tokenization of his artwork? Well, Picasso was quite a character, right? As, as, as everyone knows, uh, someone who has kept on reinventing himself throughout his career and which was a very long career. He've also pushed the boundaries, for example, by introducing cubism, trying to get the, the, the viewer to look at an app or to see the essence of an object at once from all angles. And 
hence, I think he would be very open and actually excited to see what we've, you know, what that we've taken his art as a baseline to push uh, mm -hmm. it even further. And also very much in line, of course, with the digital age that we're in, which if should we be, should he be here today, of course, he would also be part of, and hence, I think he would be excited and support it. So uh, thank you, Matthias, for your time today. It's always great to have a conversation. Thank you, Dom, likewise.